Hi everybody, Dominic Esposito, the drill instructor. Welcome to the clinic. Tonight we're gonna to get into defensive strategies and I'm gonna share a couple of things with you that came in as a result of some letter and videos that I got and asking, did I do this right? What should I have done? And I'm gonna answer that tonight. So I've got a situation here with this nine ball game, okay? Now the fellow was running out and apparently he got stuck. So this is what's happening here. I've got the cue ball down end of the table, one ball here, here's my eight and nine, here's my two and seven, okay? So this guy had a really great break shot and uh, he might have tried to play a defense, whatever he did, this is the way the table came out. What do you do? And I wanna be sure to give you some feedback on this. Now, a lot of you, because you're so hyper to just think offense, 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 and I get it, if you're not on offense, it's hard to win. But if you recognize the fact that defense is for the purpose of controlling the table and controlling your opponent, that's it. You control the table, you control the opponent. And whenever you execute a defensive shot, 99% of the time, only one ball, that's it, that's it, one ball. It's either the cue ball or the object ball, and that's the only ball you focus on. Only once in a while is there the, what you call the two-way shot, what I call the ODO, the offense-defense option. And with that said, here's a situation where you have to take control of your opponent, control the table, and I want to force this guy to give me ball in hand so that I can run out. Now, in this kind of a situation, take a look. And for those of you, you'll watch it back. I want you to work on this. You need to practice this. What do you do to shoot this? One of the best advantages is to know the 30 degree rule. When you know the 30 degree rule that a cue ball rolling off an object ball, it will always roll off at a 30 degree angle. In this case, at a 30 degree angle, if I hit the left side, here, you can play the hard shot, the low probability shot, try to bank the one ball, but you're gonna really have a tough time breaking up the two, you're gonna bang into these, you can't really control them. So, Here's the way you want to really control this. I'm recommending that you would shoot this with a half ball hit, a natural roll, with a four speed shot stroke. Now everybody knows a four speed shot stroke. So from this end of the table, a half a diamond off the rail, one, two, three, four. So the way to practice this shot in the first place is come on up here and set up some four speed shot stroke that's it, some lag strokes, and go ahead and hit a few of them. Get yourself dialed into a good four speed so that when you're practicing this, you're gonna be able to really recognize the shot speed that you should be working with. So go ahead and hit 10 or 20 of them. And in this case, I'll just hit one more. I'm gonna bring that cue ball down table. That's the speed I'm shooting this shot with, okay? So I'm gonna take this, my objective is to cause my opponent to foul and give me ball in hand. So I'm gonna shoot at this one ball with that four speed shot stroke. I'm just gonna release into the one ball, let the cue ball run up natural, come in and give me some distance. Okay, let's go ahead and shoot that again one more time. Let's go ahead and put the one that was about there. These were right about here. And once again, Four speed shot stroke, look at how natural, look at how natural what you're gonna do. I want you working on this stroke, okay? I just want you hitting half a ball, come in, pull it out, and that's it, right there. Just give yourself the ability to come back to the table, cause this guy to have to hit a one rail or a two rail kick shot. Do it again, but listen, when you practice a shot like this, you gotta practice this shot a hundred times. Now it's gonna come up in 100 different variations, but this exact same stroke is exactly what's gonna come up for you every single time. And I'm releasing this with a four speed shot stroke. I'm just gonna let that ball naturally roll right into the gap. And look what I'm doing here, okay? I mean, he's not gonna jump that. He's gonna be lucky to hit that. And look at, I got him in trouble. He's probably gonna scratch on it. So that's the first thing I want you to do. Work on that defensive strategy right there. And the very fact that if you want to walk up to this shot, you could use an open finger, just kind of see where the natural roll is. And I could see the cue ball's coming straight into the diamond. Well, that gives me the perfect avenue. Some of you, if you have a bank rail angle calculator, 
All you got to do is just pull it up on the shot and I can see the 30 degree line and I use the brack specifically for my training to get my 30 and 90 degree angles. Of course, it also does great for my banking kick. Look at this. Watch this one time. Let's say my opponent is smart enough to pull this shot off here. Okay, so he gives me a half ball hit. He locks me in. He's going to lock me up. That's pretty darn good right there. But I got to hit this one ball. Now, if you don't have a bank rail angle calculator, you're going to need to know the manual recovery for this, okay? The manual recovery, remember, you find the center, pivot to the passing pocket, lift it up, parallel shift. Or I can just pull out my brack, stand back, 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, that's it. In three seconds, I can see the shot. And basically, I need to shoot right here on the rail, and this is going to get me out of trouble, and I'm not going to get myself in a situation where I'm giving a ball in hand. So I'm going to lock him up, but I didn't expect my opponent to be that good. What are you kidding? He's probably going to get all jammed up. But when you're using a bank rail angle calculator and you're practicing your one rail kicks, your two rail kicks, your 30 and 90 degree carry, I mean, your bank shots, you're going to have the proficiency of even knowing if your parallel shift is even accurate. All right, let's look at this situation in another situation like this. Let's go ahead and bring the balls down here. Let's say this is what happened. I'm looking at this shot. I can't cut it in. It's going to probably best case scenario. I'm hitting here, but I'm going to let this cue ball go flying. There's no control in that. So what I want to do is lock up my opponent, get back to the table. Now, there's two ways you can play this shot, and I'm going to tell you based on the table that you're playing on. If you're playing on a type of a table that's slow, the cloth is slow, the cushions are slow, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it because you're just stuck on that table, and you know what kind of tables those are, okay? They're certainly not diamond tables, that's for sure. But the point is, if you had to play on a table that's running a little rough and slow, I want to hit this shot with a six-speed shot stroke. So very quickly, let me show you six-speed from here up and down the table. I'm going to go up and down the table one, two, three times all the way up. Now that's a five speed, so I need more than a five speed. And this is why you want to work on your shot speed for about uh, five or six or seven different shots. Seems like my slider must have popped off. That's okay, I'll just throw another one right on here. And a six speed shot stroke is going to take me all the way to the other end of the table. So let's go ahead and put the speed on that. So we're making that all the way to the other end of the table. We might have to shoot it again. Now you might have to shoot this a handful of times until you really get comfortable with your six speed shot stroke. You say, well, why a six speed shot stroke, Dominic? The answer is because again, if you're playing on a relatively slow look, that's in the six speed. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You're gonna shoot this a six speed shot stroke. That being the case, the way I wanna shoot this is I want the one ball to just travel back and forth on the table and I'm going to put some heat on this. The reason for it is the table might not be rolling level, the cushions may be slow, the cloth may be slow, the balls may be dirty. This is just enough reasons to choose this path instead of the slow roll. So let's go ahead and shoot this with our six speed shot stroke and watch what happens. Okay, watch what I'm doing with that cue ball. See where I'm bringing it? Okay, let's go ahead and shoot that again. And notice what happened to the one ball. Did you see? I just got the one ball going back and forth from side to side, just like that, and roll the cue ball right there. That's it, just roll it up. And there it is, put it in that position and lock up your opponent. Maybe he could jump it, maybe he's gonna do a two rail kick, whatever the case may be, but this is gonna give you so much more control and you're shooting this, again, with the six speed shot stroke, you're shooting this shot, you're locking up your opponent this way and giving yourself a much better control. Now, if you're playing on a faster table, there's another way, go two rails with this one ball here and back to here. And this time you're only gonna hit with a five speed 
Shot stroke, five speed. One, two, three, four, five. So watch what happens this time. With the five speed shot stroke, I could use a much slower, controlled roll. Now I wanna be careful, I don't wanna make that. So I really didn't hit that perfect. I don't, I don't actually wanna bank that. I'm gonna put it into this back cushion over here. So let's go ahead and hit that one more time. But my speed was perfect. That's the part that really was perfect. Very, there it is, right perfect with my speed. You see? And look at what I'm doing to this guy. Okay, you don't have a chance. Once again, if I take out my bank rail angle calculator and I step back and I'm looking at this thing, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, okay, wait a second. Using the brack, if I don't use the brack, I gotta go back to this method here and pick it up and parallel shift. But whatever the case may be, however you're gonna go after this thing, here's what's gonna, oh, see, I got them jammed up. This is perfect. And by the way, I did see that. That is pretty much about where it's actually gonna go. Sure, just about every time. Otherwise, yeah, I hit the point on this side. So your opponent is locked up, and that's the key. You control your opponent, you control the table, and that's what gives you the ability to come back to the table with ball in hand and take control and win the game. Defensive strategies are so critical. Don't automatically just go trying to shoot for the offensive shot. Look for the way of controlling your opponent, controlling the table, get that cue ball back, come back to the table where you're in control of winning that game or force your opponent to give you the game. That's how you play smart. I'm not saying you always have to play defense. I'm saying don't take the low percentage shots, don't take the flyers, and the cue ball's running wild, and then you're banging into other balls and you have no real setup and control. So look at the situation smart. And when you practice these two drills, when you practice this, practice the slow cross, crisscross, and practice it into the two rails. And then also on the top one here, practice it from the long distance and work on the distances. Put that cue ball even all the way back on the rail if you have to. And that's the way you're gonna go. So I love you guys. Thank you for the feedback. Anybody, what else you want me to be teaching or talking about, Continue to write to me. Send it to Dominic at thedrillinstructor.us. I'll respond to it. I've got some more letters that built up on what I'm going to start working on for next week. But in the meantime, aim straight, shoot straight, split the pockets. And remember, defensive strategy, that is critical for controlling your opponent and controlling the table. God bless you. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.